you ever try to fix a mannequin? Actually really awkward. The loop, put that on the leg. And then you gotta pull with all your might. Get up in there and clamp that. That one's on the house. Tutorial within a tutorial. Tutorialception. Hey there guys, James Graves here and welcome back to yet another tutorial. The first tutorial of 2021 and oh, it's a good one. I'm just gonna put this out there. This might be one of the best yet. Now I'm sure you've all seen the watch cases that you can buy, but I've just got a few little problems with those. For starters, I don't really wanna pay that much money for a display case. Secondly, they don't usually have anywhere to store my rings. And as you guys probably know, I've got quite a few of those. And thirdly, it's, it's not unique. You see on everyone's Instagram, they've all got the same case. So if you make one yourself, then you're gonna be the only one that has that. So today I'm going to show you how to make your very own and I specifically designed this especially for you guys to be made from the most simple, most readily available materials and using the minimum tools possible. So before we jump over to the workshop, I'm going to quickly preface this by saying I've made mine to hold three watches and a specific amount of rings. But as you'll see as we go along, I'm going to include some designs to be able to hold two watches, four watches and you can vary this to hold as many as you like or if you don't want to hold rings, you can use it for sunglasses, phones, whatever. I'm going to talk about that as I go through. So you can really design this however you like to hold whatever you like. I'm merely going to show you the materials, the tools, and the techniques that you need to be able to build your own personalized display case. So with that out of the way, let's look at the materials and tools that you're going to need. First thing you're going to need is some wood for your base. I'm using 2x4 CLS studding timber, but anything similar will work, and you can even use a hardwood if you want to. Next, you need some wooden round for the pillars that hold the watches. You're looking for something with roughly a 2 inch diameter. I happen to have this old rounders bat lying around, which I believe is some type of ash, but the color's very similar to my pine, so it should blend in quite well. Now, you are going to need a drill with a driver bit, two wood drill bits, one that's about 2 or 3 millimeters for drilling pilot holes, and another larger one that's 7 or 8 mil to be able to countersink the heads of your screws. Then you're gonna need some wood screws, some wood glue, your choice of finish for your wood, whether this includes a dye, or just simply an oil, wax, or a varnish. Something you can use is a blowtorch if you're looking for a dramatic look for your wood, but this isn't essential. And finally, a pencil for marking on your wood. So the first thing you're gonna do is cut your timber to length. I'm using a circular chop saw, but you can use a hand saw, a jigsaw, or a table saw, whatever you have available to you to be able to cut this wood. Now for a design that holds three watches, you wanna cut this to 260 millimeters, but I'm gonna chuck up some other measurements on the screen for different sizes that you can use. I'm cutting off three lengths at this size, but it may be that I only end up using two. Now it's important at this stage you cut these accurately so that the ends all line up when we screw it together later. Now while we're only using basic materials and basic tools, we can still achieve a professional result if we get these little details, get the fundamentals correct in the first place. Next, you wanna cut your wooden round to 50 millimeters or two inch lengths and you're gonna cut off as many as you have watches to display. Just be careful if you're using an electric saw like I am because this wooden round can be a little bit slippery. So go slow with it and make sure you're holding it nice and tight. Now that's it, you've got all the parts you need so let's get to putting this together. Start by marking out the positions of your watch pillars. I'm gonna put the correct measurements up on the screen now for you to see and I'm actually gonna link those templates in the description below that you can download for free. So you can simply print those off, stick them on your bit of wood and all the measurement is done for you. But if you prefer to do it by hand then I'm gonna show you quickly now how I do it manually. First I draw a center line down the length of my wood, then a measure from the ends and mark where my pillars are gonna go. Next you wanna mark the centers of the pillars themselves. This is actually easier than it sounds, easier than it looks, and you don't need specific tools like a lot of people seem to think. All you need to do is measure the diameter of your wood and then start from one end and just mark halfway along. Then rotate your pillar 90 degrees and mark another halfway point from there in line with the first marking. Now you're gonna rotate your pillar a further 90 degrees and since your first mark probably wasn't super accurate, now you're gonna measure halfway along and draw a little cross along with the second marking. And this should give you a nice accurate center. I just recommend going around your pillar now, rotating it all through 360 degrees and check that it remains central all the way around, making any little adjustments if you need to. And then of course, repeat this for your other pillars as well. Next, you wanna drill some pilot holes in the center of your pillar using your smaller drill bit. 
making sure that you don't go all the way down, you probably want to go about halfway. Now back to your main piece of wood, you want to use that pilot drill again, and this time going all the way through, trying to drill as straight down as possible. Now it's important here that you flip your wood over, and then you use your larger drill bit to countersink the holes by about 5mm, just enough to cover the heads of your screws. Make sure you don't countersink on the side that you marked, because on that side those holes are perfectly central, and that's where it's going to locate the pillars. On the other side, it's likely that they're not going to be quite perfect because you drilled all the way through that wood. So this ensures that the pillars are going to be in the right place when you finish up. Now attaching your pillars is very easy. On the side that you countersunk, put your screws in until the end is just sticking out a little bit. You just want enough screw showing to be able to locate the hole in the bottom of the pillar. Now if you have wood glue, put a little bit on the base of your pillar, position the pillar over the screw and then drive the screw in. Make sure you don't apply too much pressure to this screw, it's just there to locate the pillar. The glue will hold it in place and you don't want to split the wood by going too far with it. Then just twist the pillar a little bit by hand, remembering righty tighty to make sure it's nice and tight on top. Then repeat this for all of your pillars. Looks good, doesn't it? Well, if you just want something to hold your watches, feel free to skip to the end when I talk about the surface finish because this will do well as a watch display stand. But for those of you that want to display your rings or your sunglasses or other kinds of things, then carry on watching because we're gonna add a second layer to this now to be able to hold some of those things. Now at this stage, I played around with the design a little bit to work out what it was that I wanted out of my piece. Now originally I was gonna do the second shelf, the full depth of the wood, and as you can see, this can hold something like a phone. But since I'm just displaying my rings, that's more than I need. So I pulled that top watch display forward just to give me a little shelf that I can hold my rings on. That allowed me to remove that back piece of wood and I can make the whole thing out of two pieces. But at this stage, I urge you guys to get creative with it. Do you want two levels? Do you want three levels? Are you holding rings, bracelets, phones, sunglasses? Whatever it is you want to display, you can tailor this design to suit that. And whichever you decide, the techniques are exactly the same, so you can still follow along, but just position these shelves and bits of wood wherever you want them. Now, once you've decided the positioning of your second shelf, I recommend drawing a line where you want it and then apply some glue behind and attach your watch display stand on top of it. Now, if you have clamps, 100% use them at this stage, but if you don't, don't worry at all, you don't need them. We're gonna be screwing this together later, so the glue is merely there to locate everything in place and make sure it's not gonna slide around when we add our screws in later. Now, go away and have a cup of tea or coffee and come back in half an hour or an hour when your glue is set. One hour later. Now we want to turn our piece over and using the same technique as before, we're going to drill a pilot first, then a countersink, and then we're going to add our screws in to hold everything together. Make sure at this stage that you don't drill all the way through with your pilot hole. I'd recommend using a bit of tape just to work out the depth that you need. And this will make sure that you don't go too far. Now the way that I've designed this, the screws are on the bottom, so you're not going to see them anyway, but if for any reason you've got screws on the back or the sides, then here's a little trick that you can use to fill them in and you won't see them later. Fill the screw hole with tons of wood glue so it's spilling out over, then get a load of sawdust and just jam it in there and just keep packing it down as much as you possibly can until it's nice and tight. Now of course you have to wait a while for this to go off again, but this is a perfect natural wood filler which looks far better than any oil-based filler that you can buy and once we've applied our surface finish it really will blend in very well. Once that's dry you can scrape off the excess and just sand over it a little bit to blend it in. Now our final step before we apply the surface finish is just to sand everything over and smooth it all off. Pay particular attention to sanding off the ends of your pillars and around all the edges of the wood. This will give everything a nice smooth finish and make it nicer to look at and to use. You can use a standard pencil eraser for any lines that you might have drawn on in the wood. Now it's time for your desired finish. I like to burn my wood, so I'm going over with the blowtorch first to just really bring out the grain and give it a nice dramatic look. Now I don't want that harsh black that's coming through from the areas that are burnt, so I'm just going to go over it quickly with some 80 grit sandpaper and just smooth that off and all that's going to do is just raise those black and make it look a little bit more natural. Some people will like the super dark dramatic finish but personally I think it can look just a little bit amateur so I always like to scale it back just a little bit and then when we apply our top coat it just looks a little bit more natural. 
whether you decided to burn your wood or not, now it's time to apply any stains that you're thinking of using, and then finally apply your top finish, whether that be wax or oil. I'm personally not applying any wood dye in this instance, I'm just using Danish oil to seal everything together and bring out the grain a little bit more. For a more detailed understanding of how to finish off your wood, I'll link one of my older videos above that explains that in a bit more depth. Once you've applied your surface finish, you can let that set and then you're good to go. There you have it guys, your very own unique customised watch display stand. So I hope you guys liked this video and you found something useful from it. If you did, please do drop it a like, comment below what you want to see next time, and don't forget to subscribe and click all notifications for all future videos, new tutorials every couple of weeks maybe, I, I don't know anymore, but new videos every single week. So thank you so much to all of you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.